Today we're out at Kipchoge Stadium. We're interviewing Jason Karp, who's an American coach, has written a bunch of books. Today's unlimited threshold repeats, starting at 1,600 meters. So Jason, do you mind running me through today's, today's program? What is it that you're doing? Yeah, today we're doing a threshold intervals. So we start with 1,600 meter reps, and uh, we keep going until they get sufficiently fatigued, and then we cut it down to 1,200, and then we'll do 1,200 meter reps until the same thing, until they get sufficiently fatigued. Then we'll cut it down to 800, and then finally 400, all at the same pace, all at lactate threshold pace. So we can try to squeeze out as much volume as we can at threshold pace. Okay, we're gonna do a similar workout to last Tuesday. So threshold pace the whole time, we're gonna start with 1600 meter reps. So I'll tell you in a second what that pace is for everybody. One minute recovery in between. We'll communicate together after every rep. I'm gonna ask you how you feel. And as you start to get really fatigued, then we're gonna cut it down. But when we cut it down, the pace is the same the whole time. So it should feel comfortably hard. And as I've explained before, the fatigue should come from the duration of the workout, not from the pace. It's like when you do the first rep, the first couple of reps, it shouldn't feel hard. It should still feel aerobic. The whole workout should feel aerobic, but the fatigue will come from the entire duration, the volume of work that we're doing. The reps are shorter. Don't go faster. So Silas and Nagesu, 310 to 313 per K. So the 1600 meter reps, 504 to 508. Don't worry about what's to come. Just focus on one rep at a time. And so how have you determined the threshold pace that they're running at and how do you know when they're sufficiently tired to move into the yeah, next? Yeah, that's a good question. So in the beginning, we did time trials so that I could set the pace of the workout. We determined the fatigue based on the pace and whether they're in control of the pace or whether the pace is controlling them and also how on they feel. You know, after every rep, I ask them how they feel. You know, in the beginning, they're a little bit too quick because their legs are fresh. But then as the workout goes on, you can see how they start to fall behind a little bit when they're getting fatigued. How do you guys feel? Five minutes, 501. Good, aerobic, good job guys. 75, <laughs> right on. And uh, what do you think is useful and unique about the specific type of uh, workout? Most runners, they know before the, the workout how many reps they're gonna do. They, they make that decision before the workout even begins. And there's a couple of issues with that. One is the psychological issue. You know, if you have a predetermined number of reps, say you're gonna do you know, 10 reps, then what happens when you get to rep eight and nine and 10? You feel tired because you think you're supposed to be tired because the workout, you know you're only gonna do 10. But if you leave it open-ended, and just, it forces you to focus on each rep at a time because you don't know what's coming next. And you let the workout unfold the way it's supposed to unfold that day and you base the number of reps based on the amount of fatigue because fatigue is what you respond to, that's what you adapt to. The number of reps is arbitrary. What matters is causing fatigue. 349, good, keep it under control the whole way, comfortably hard the whole time. 505, perfect. Relax, 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 let's go. And so fatigue is what you're after. At the end of the session, how, how fatigued are these guys going to be? Yeah, they should be exhausted. And then you recover during your easy days. You make sure the easy days are very, very easy. So they know what they're capable of, but I want to push them you know, past that. Really just focus on each one at a time. And then by the time they're done, they're surprised at how much they can accomplish. 506. Good job, guys. How do you feel? Does it feel good? Yeah. Good. Same pace. Six. Good. You're settled in now. Now it's good. Okay. Here we go. Is most of that fatigue cardio or, or muscle or combination of both? You know, both, but with this, it'll be more muscular. It's more about raising the lactate threshold. So we're running at the fastest aerobic pace. So the, the fatigue is gonna be mostly muscular. With any physiological factor, it's all about stressing that factor. And the way you stress that factor is by running over and over and over again at the ceiling of that factor so that you ultimately raise the ceiling. But the pace is still consistent. I think we want to do good advantage. Are you that? Are you all that fatigued yeah, yet? Yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll start with twelve hundreds. Yeah. We'll do as many as these as we can. Work together. Do you think they decided to drop down too soon? No, I don't think. I mean, they've already done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've already done seven times sixteen hundred. As I've told them, when you become a master of the pace, you become a master of yourself, because that's going to help them a lot when it's time to race. Because most people will go out too fast in a race. But by controlling these workouts and really ingraining the right pace and becoming a master of the pace, then that helps them when they get to a race.
not everyone's going to run the exact same number of reps, and that's okay. Not everyone is going to experience the exact same amount of fatigue at the exact same number of reps. You know, that's one flaw of group training is that everybody does the same number of reps, but then not everyone is getting the, the best workout for them. And so even in the context of group training, you can still individualize things so that each person is getting the best training stimulus. And one way you can individualize things is by not having a specific number of reps decided before the workout begins. At the moment it's all you telling them to control and, and, and stay back and, and keep it under control, but yeah. how much later on in the exercise does it become you urging them on? For this kind of a workout I won't do that as much because I don't want them to have to be reaching for the pace. When we get to the faster stuff later, the VO2 max intervals, the anaerobic work, that's when they're actually trying to go and push and, and run much faster. For this, it's got to be kept under control. So when I see that they're falling behind a little bit, then I know it's time to cut the, the distance of the rep. But uh, later on in the session, will you ever be in a position where you're telling them, okay, no, you can do one more rep at this pace, or? Yeah, poss oh, yeah possibly. Think about that this is going to be the last one. You see what just happened? You actually ran that one faster because you think this is going to be the last one. So don't put that thought into your head. Assess how you feel after it's over and just focus on each rep. Let's do another one. Okay. Same pace. Don't get faster just because we're cutting them down. Same pace the whole way, threshold pace. We're gonna do another one, because clearly you can run faster. Keep it under control, guys. Press that pace. 73. Okay, now they're done. I mean, they'll keep going. <laughs> they could keep going, but unless these two want to go. He's, Nicholas is gone. You can tell now he's exhausted. What do you think? One more? Okay. One more. First 200 under control. Second 200 you can go. Instructions from the coach. Well done, man. <laughs> you should be exhausted. That was fantastic. Jason, thanks so much for the session today. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. They did an enormous amount of work. It's exhausting.